Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to round two of DNYCS Tokyo, the first DNYCS of the 2016 season. Yesterday, you've seen one of the round two matches. Today, you'll be seeing another between SMP Gaming and Monkey D Dragon. Both of these, just like in yesterday's duel, both of these players have won their round one matches. Let's see who will move on undefeated after round two. Both of the 15 card extra decks are very likely no monarchs on either side. One of the first things that I notice is that SP has 41 cards in their deck. Which you don't see a lot, but then again, 41 generally isn't that much of a problem. Tour guide on Monkey's side, which suggests Burning Abyss. Is it true? Drum roll. What did I say? You just ran where it is. Huh. Oh, I suppose that effect still works. Alright, Dante comes out. Fiendish ran where it does make. Them more useful. Milling three. Oh, that's still the cost. Skill drain, okay. Alright, I'm pretty sure Rhino sends a fiend from deck to grave, which is generally burning a so they can activate the effect. Rubik, I'm pretty sure, is the other one, which is the tuner, who doesn't have a sent to grave effect. And even if it did, the monkey wouldn't be able to use it now because. Well, they didn't announce it as part of the chain, and it's optional. Graph comes out, running a miss from the deck. Seer. Skarm is activated. Wants to be summoned to the field. Likely overlaid into a second Dante. Skarm to the grave, so Skarm could add something. Ooh. I wonder how SMP will, or Sab will respond to this. Second Dante. It's somewhat hard to get over it, and even if Seb is able to, Monkey can still use like the Dante's effects and the Scar, or the Scarm effects yeah, in the end phase. See, so able to summon Craft from the grave. Empty spell, Fairground is likely against Monkey. Looks like it's Monarchs. The most. I've noticed. Monarchs is quite a few spells. I didn't really know much about them before this tournament, to be honest, because I hadn't faced any of them before the tournament. <laughs> Two side cards. That's it. No monsters from SMP. Which, watch Monkey use Twin Twister now. <laughs> Like, I feel so bad for SP. <laughs> Taking out those two cards. Oh, Mirror Force, someone else. And Treacherous. Oh, huh, interesting. To use Treacherous, but also with other traps. Got Dante in that order, so then they'd have to use Dante first. They didn't say Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, but it, it's better to do it. Chances are SP doesn't have a response, but it may still be important. Who knows what they have? Wait, what just happened? I was looking away for like a millisecond. Don't say I must have added something back to the hand. Although I didn't see it pop up on there. Graph summons Barbar. Bar. Banish for damage. It's coming in face. Seb is likely reading a card effect, making sure that everything's alright. Yep. 
Skarm comes out, adding tour guide. Fitness Rhino Warrior, one of the two probably. It's Farpa. Alright. Now SB is an empty field. How much damage will Monkey be able to inflict this turn? Let's see. Three mills. Are there burning abyss among them that can use effects? Oh, I saw two of them, including a scum. Uh, SMP did say, hang on, please calm down. Please stop, wait. Seb did say, hang on. He can still respond to Dante's effect. If he has a response, like, I don't know, I don't know what he has in his hand. But he might just want to read the cards to know exactly what's happening, or what he can expect. Which might change his plays, depending on what he reads and sees, and expects to happen. That's possible. He said, hang on. After Dan like as Dante was milling. So Fiendish Rhino Warrior is still in the hand. What are they gonna chain though? Max C. Okay. No special summons yet. Now I might just Barbar was there last turn. Yeah. Ooh, this is going to be some heavy damage. 14, 17 for 31, 25 makes 56 on a damage. At least with only 24. The monkey just, I think, just won't exceed summon now to make sure SMB Gaming doesn't get any cards that could stop him. Because he, even if he doesn't exceed into Dante or whatever else, he still has a good field. I don't expect him to exceed. Barbara can't finish him off with 900 damage either, so that that also wouldn't be a reason to finish it. He does exceed summon though, interestingly. What does he go into? Something fancy that can help? Secure the victory even more? Well, maybe you just want to set set some stuff up, get more... Uh, what's the word? Not materials. I suppose not materials as in exceed materials, but just the regular word, materials, for later. So it does get a draw from Max C. Skarm was sent to the graveyard this turn, so the effect is possible. Mills one. They likely just wanna use Barbar's effect. Finish Rhino Warrior happens. So Rhino Warrior is the last one. Rhino resolves first because they met their trigger last and they're both optional. However, isn't it the cost to banish for Barbar? I don't actually know it too well. Because I haven't used Burning Bus in a while. I don't know if it's a cost to banish for Barbar. If so, that would uh, that should have happened before the time. Like as the chain was being built. But banishing Kagna before it can activate in the graveyard, Kagna just cannot activate anymore. <coughs> Kagna cannot activate.
So we know we do know now that the ritual spell is in the deck. Pretty sure they added it to their deck. Pretty sure they did. To be honest, I can't hundred percent remember, but I'm pretty sure it was at the deck. <laughs> he should have my PM right about now. Luckily he wasn't reading watches either. I suppose Monkey could have been a bit clearer as to what happened. But, yeah. Everything is clear now. Alright. With the draw from Maxi and the draw for this draw face, can Seb actually make a move against what seems to be a very good setup for Monkey? With two Dantes out, one with the material. It is indeed DD, as I expected from Seb. DD is one of his favorites, is not a, if not his most favorite deck. I'm not entirely sure, but it's definitely one of his favorite, most favorite decks to play. So, he will use Dark Contact with the Gates to, at least if he can resolve it, at a DD month from deck to hand to hopefully make some kind of play to maybe stand a little chance, because with these three set cards and the Dante's effects still live, uh, things are not looking all that great for Sab right now. Let's see what he adds. The scary thing about the Dark Contracts, especially at this low life points, the thousand damage, like mandatory thousand damage during your standby phase. So Seb would need something like um, Leonidas or Dark to pretty much either stop the damage or turn it into healing. Now he has two of them, so he definitely needs it. Chances are he'll summon Dark, and he just hopes that the opponent doesn't have any traps or face down spells or whatever to stop them, because otherwise, like, he just. It just doesn't work. And all the like would they have let bottomless trap hole for Dark would Seb want to summon it, then all Monkey needs to do is just end their turn, Seb takes two thousand damage and that's it. Although Seb might still have Leonidas in his hand, which he might which he could still activate after taking the first damage from Lesser just Swamp King summons it, takes the thing back, and then when Gate activates, they give one deal damage to Leonidas effect. Which makes Seb not take any effect damage. Monkey is thinking on Gates activation. The activation of Dark Contract with the Swamp King isn't necessarily the activation of the effect. Torchester comes out. Ah, uh, yeah. This, is, this must be the end of sub. It has to be. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Uh. Not looking good. <laughs> Third down take, because why not? That's going to be either Downward Magician, although I've not seen any Downward Magician yet, so I expect... No, future number... So might not actually work. HA! <laughs> he has another Swamp King! And he never activated the effect, he just activated the spell to which Twin Twister was chained. He never activated the effect so he can use it. Yeah. Slight mistake in Monkey's part. Maybe he didn't expect the second Swamp King, but okay. Dark comes out. Slime wasn't used yet, so... Although each effect can be used on Spiritron. Maybe Seb still has something fancy in his hand. Does he have Transmodify in this deck? 
because I've seen I've seen Sev use transmodify. He's like four different DDD decks. This probably being one of them. I've seen him use transmodify one of his decks with which he tribute dark, summon. Was it? The level 8 thing, they can summon stuff from the grave. He summons that and then just brings Dark Pack from the grave, which is actually a pretty fancy move. Alright, now let's see what he can do with his Oracle King Dark. Excuse me. SMB Gaming is carefully planning their strategy. While well, Monkey may just be sitting there like, I have a trap just to tackle ready so I could use it. Who knows? Goes for the Dante with the material to make sure the effect can be used next turn if it's destroyed. Takes it. Down to Rhino, Rhino would as well first. That's at least in the chain link order that he like the first thing he mentions is chain link one. That's how he's done it so far. So Rhino should now resolve first. Down to Zara doesn't really matter because Seb is, in a, is unable to negate it, but still, for consistency reasons. He did it in reverse order that time. Let's see, Phoenix Rhino since Libic. Um, <clears throat> Libic allows him to summon a level 3 Dark Fiend from the hand with negated effects. Okay. Far Frog comes out. That just allows Monkey th to, through a normal summon, get a new Xyz out. And they can still go for future number 0. I don't remember the exact effects, but I know that Running is, is able to run it because they're easily they go into so many rank threes. Let's see. Ooh, Swirl Slum comes out now. Why would he summon in Mephis two? Why did he banish two cards? Um, that's not Swirl Slime's effect. That's Swamp King. Other slime confused on the grave. Seems Monkey was un unaware of it. Didn't read. Maybe he just didn't read. <coughs> it was like, okay, I'll trust the opponent that it's fine. But it's Necro Slime that confused on the graveyard. I was thinking they'd use um, Dark Contact with Swamp King's second effect, but the effect can only be used. The effect of Fuse can only be used once per turn, and the using them from the graveyard by banishing them is part of that same effect. It's just an extra possibility for that effect. And the effect can only be used once per turn, and Seb was ready to use that. I'm thinking he may have wanted to summon a second Dark, um, so then overlay into something that could stop the opponent. Not really sure what it would be yet, but Seb will probably be able to tell me after the match. Um, then, the reason he didn't go for it 
in main phase. One is I think he was afraid of something like Mirror Force. So that would the opponent be able to take out the first dark with something like Mirror Force, Dimensional Prison, anything like that. Seb would still have the second dark to s be able to defend his life points from attacks from Swampkin's, Swampkin's uh, damage effect. And things like that. But unfortunately he was unable to because he mixed up the two slimes. Seer comes out from a normal summon. This can be an next season to a new rank 3. Let's see what it is. Ha! <laughs> you can brilliant. Interesting. They're not gonna go over to more than 13 or 21 unless you have something else that's fancy. Okay. 13, 13, 21. <gasps> right! Farfus effect! Right. I completely forgot about the Burning Abyss effects for a sec because it wasn't a Burning Abyss Exist monster. Well, looks like this is uh, game one. It is indeed. Monkey D Dragon's Burning Abyss it beats SMB Gaming's uh, DDD deck for game one. But as with all D and YCS matches, this is a match duel, aka you need to win two out of three. So, Seb still has a chance to take this home and be undefeated after two rounds, but he will have to win two duels in a row to get that far. Burning Abyss have a lot of cards that activate in the graveyard. They really want the graveyard, so things like Macrocosmos and Dimensional Fissure could really work out for them. However, with the slimes and <clears throat> being able to activate from the graveyard on Seb's side, and also some other cards that can summon something from the graveyard, Swamp King can banish stuff from the graveyard, Dimensional Fissure and Macrocosmos won't really work well for Seb, although it'd really get in the way of Monkey. Debunk, I suppose it could work. Um, Shadow Imprisoning Mirror is a great card against Burning Abyss because they're almost all Dark Monsters and Shadow Imprisoning Mirror stops the activation of Dark Monsters' effects on the field and in the graveyard. So that uh, is a nice way to stop them. I just don't know which of these cards Seb has, which of them he wants to use, because some of the DDs are, will be Dark as well, although definitely not all of them. At the same time, Monkey side, he'll know that Seb will go for quite a few fusion sums. He likely won't have non-fusion area. Um, as a side deck card, but let's see, what other cards would you want to have? Um, DDD generally use spell cards, so something like Anti Spell Fragrance might be nice to stop the Swamp King um, and the like. The contract with the Gate, uh, even his Pendulum cards. If like, I don't know how many DD Pendulum Sep uses, and if that's really a main part of his deck, or if he just has some of the Pendulum ones in there, like uh, uh, Kepler and. Uh, Leonidas. So, eh, I suppose the anti spell fragrance could still work to stop the Swamp King to stop the rest of the, the spell dark contracts anyway. Right, Seb decides to go first. How will this game 2 turn out? Let's see. He'll definitely be hoping for a better start than last time. And that his stuff won't be destroyed by Twin Twister, which has happened to me as well. By the way, I can update on my round 2. I got obliterated. <coughs> Two nil loss. I didn't stand a chance. So I'm 1 1 now. Set card on the set side. Face down. Spell trap. And that is it. Let's see how quickly Monkey is able to fill up his field and his graveyard. Starting off with Barbar's special summoning itself, because Monkey doesn't have any spells or traps. That's a free 1700 attack on the field, although that's likely going to be used for uh, <coughs> an Xyz with Skarm. Scum would, uh, would almost certainly be sent to the grave at first. This will very likely be a Dante. There it is.
comes on the graveyard mill three to set up. Yep. Mill three to set up the graveyard with some stuff. Uh, Phoenix Rhino Warrior and a Graph. That's nice, though. That's nice. Rhino Graph, Graph being able to summon a Burning Abyss monster from the deck, getting Monkey some free extra attack power or something else he can combo or XC summon with. Phoenix Rhino Warrior then able to send a card, a, fe a Fiend type monster from the deck to the graveyard, being able to set them up with a Seer that can then summon Graph, which means second XC summon for Monkey. Huh. Burning Abyss can combo hard. I do wonder how Set will uh, work against this. Rubik comes out. Planning to synchro. Siren does indeed come out. Likely going to be Graph now. Does state target allowing sub response time? That's good for monkey. Sub doesn't have a response. Monster comes out. Yeah, here comes Virgil. And even though Dante can be really annoying, I've had more trouble taking out Virgil. I'm necessarily taking it out, but it could just be like, okay, I don't like your card. Get rid of it, shuffle into the deck. And they just have to discard a Burning Abyss card for it. it. Can be a monster, can be like a trap or a spell. And generally, those cards don't mind being in the graveyard anyway, because they have it. They uh, want to be there for effects, whether they immediately trigger or can be used later. Ooh. Let's remember what this original spell does. Generally, it's using. Sometimes it's using Burning Abyss like one, maybe two. Generally, at one. Without the ritual monster. Oh, glow a bulb. Interesting card. Yeah. 2500 damage there. Glow a bulb can summon itself back from the graveyard during Sim's turn. So he may be able to get a nice synchro out. Can he get. Can he get a fancy enough synchro out? to stop Dante and Virgil and the three set cards that Monkey has waiting for him. Err. Seb, good luck. I was even going to use Scarm to add something. almost forgot about that. To our guy to just allow them to get an XC7 next turn. Whatever Seb does. What will you do? Slam comes out. Huh, interesting. Normal summon. Maybe they wanna then use global synchro them into formula synchron to get a draw and then be able to use Necro Slam. But then they'd still need another one in the grave. Another DD. Huh. Interesting play. What now? Okay, where art thou? Works with Necro Slime. Pretty sure the other slime is level one as well, go up, Bob. If you didn't normal summon monster, like he already normal summoned this turn, so Seb will be taking 2000 damage. Unless he's able to summon Dark. Then he actually heals the 2000. That's an interesting thing. I've never actually seen Where Art Thou in a DD deck. Huh. Interesting card, Sebi. What will be at it, though? Wait. He can actually add Necro Slime. And he has Normal Summon a Necro Slime that turn. So he wouldn't take the damage. He adds Kepler. He won't be able to normal summon it this turn. So is he now going to fuse? He is going to fuse. Probably sending the Kepler along with Necro Slime to get dark, then maybe Necro Slime from the graveyard to get another one, or he he'll wait with that for main phase two just to be on the safe side. 
the Swamp King needs to work, otherwise Sebus is very likely lost this duel. Typhoon. Uh, thing is, w just like before, Monkey didn't wait for Seb to actually activate the effect. He just used it in response to the activation of the spell. So if Seb has a second Swamp King, he can still use it. That card unfortunately isn't able to do anything, so we're off that also forces them now to take 2,000 damage, and Necrosan just stays there. Oh, it's after activating this card, so even if you would have added Necroslam. It wouldn't have worked because he normally summoned it before, before the activation. Roger the shuffles the face down away. That's 5,000 attack on board. If Dante uses its effect, Sierra can summon something. Knowing this is Kepler, unless Sam activates his face down now, it's over. Yep. <laughs> he might have had good face downs, but. For, like, Monkey probably knew that the face downs were the only thing that could stop them at the time. So they were smart using Virgil to uh, get rid of them. I believe this is game. Even without the 2000 damage from Werewolf, though. Ha! <laughs> and they said it at the exact same time, too. And I didn't send Monkey a message about it. No Kepler's in the hand. Let's see, and in the graveyard are Swamp King, Where Art Thou, Glow Up Bulb. None of them can do anything. I'm thinking now why did Seb not summon Glow Up Bulb in defense mode just for defense? Likely they wanted to keep it for a summon later, or they were hoping that their trap could actually work. And they didn't want to save Glow Bulb for later because they thought I'm um, probably lose anyway if the trap doesn't work out. But Virgil was used on the face down, so. Oh, this is difficult. Monkey just doing his summons, his special summons, his exceeds, his detaches, his milling, all of the things. If he just used Dante and attack, it'd already be over. He doesn't even need the other Dante. Summoning it anyway. There's another three cards. Fiendish Rhino can already activate. Yeah, looks like it's him. Unfortunately, it seems you have been obliterated in a similar way to me. You didn't set much of a chance here, I didn't set much of a chance in my game either. Four if I just banishes Necro Slime for, uh, to add insult to injury, Necro Slime that way, for whatever reason it's said we get another turn, Necro Slime can't even use its effect. Dante detaches. Let's do more, because why not? Let's use some extra damage with Bar Bar as well. <laughs> so I was probably thinking, just finish me off already. Yep, yeah, Bar Bar comes out, 900 damage. Uh, well. Sorry, Sab. <laughs> Hopefully round 3 will go better for you. We're both 1-1, one, one, so Seb and I could actually face each other. We did that in one of the DNYs last season. He joined one of them, and we were both, I think, was it 3-2 or 4-1? I'm pretty sure we were both 3-2 after 5 rounds. It was around 5, I believe, that we faced each other. We were both 3-2, and we faced each other, and I won. I did record and upload that. If you want to find it... Uh, Go ahead. If you want me to link it, let me know. If you're on DNF watching this, uh, you can probably look back in the DNYCS forum. 
to check uh, what that is. What was the future math? Two or mods of the declare type run. I don't think I've ever seen that card. So that would have been Seb's original face down. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, that did hurt. Like, Dante's effects would have been able to be used, but... Yeah, very interesting card, Seb. Would have been very nice to use, but unfortunately, Monkey, like, very likely didn't expect the card, but... Virgil was able to play around it, and it was definitely a good choice for the opponent to take it out. Alright, that was the feature match for today. If you are in the DNYCS and you would like your match to be recorded, let me know, preferably via the Dueling Network forums PM, and then we can set up a time with uh, you and your opponent and myself to see when I can record it. It's always good to record things. And it also helps me get my daily Yu-Gi-Oh! videos, which I also uh, enjoy doing. Alright, thank you for watching. I will see you in tomorrow's daily Yu-Gi-Oh! video on my channel. Goodbye.